everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, I am uh, excited and honored to be bringing up the rear here on the big Earth Day uh, collaboration, the vitamin C collaboration. So, uh, I'm going to be doing a seascape. This is gonna be a combination of a straight pour, uh, cloudy effect straight pour, so I'm using scent enamels. And then for the water, um, I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of palette work, but generally when I do these, I get very, very fussy, and um, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. Usually I have to do high speed and a voiceover, and I'm going to try to actually fit this into a regular length video if I can. So I'm going to try my best to, to not be too fussy about it. Um, the colors we're using, a whole bunch of colors. Everything is a custom mix. The base coat slash background color is a mixture of titanium white by Liquitex and the brilliant blue uh, also by Liquitex Basics. These colors here, these are going to be my clouds. Each one of these has about uh, a, hmm, a tablespoon of the Deco Art Americana Decor Satin Enamels in Pure White and a tablespoon of the Titanium White but there is also a tiny bit, little bit, tiny, tiny bit of, there is the base color, which I've added to this one. It looks white, but it's actually very, very pale blue. This one has a tiny bit of the uh, cadmium yellow deep hue added to it. And then this one has quinacridone magenta and a bit of this here blue mixture. So it's just a tiny, tiny bit. And I mean, it, it does not take much to tint it. You don't wanna to go too bright with it because they're supposed to be clouds. And I'm not going for like fiery sunset. I'm going for more of um, a sunrise look. Then these colors here, they're probably hard to see, but uh, so these are going to be my watercolors. And I have this darkest color is the metallic cobalt blue by Artist Loft, and it is just that color. This middle color here is a mixture of the metallic cobalt blue, the Arteza pearl sky blue, and the Arteza pearl cactus green. So it is a mixture of three colors. This last color, which is more green, is the cactus green with a bit of the blue, of the, uh, the sky blue, and a bit of the cobalt blue added to it. So you'll notice when I'm doing custom blends, a lot of times I put a little bit of each color or I'm mixing a lot of the same colors together, just tiny bits added to it. It really just helps to, um, I always say homogenize. I know that's not the right word, but it still works. So it helps to, uh, to really pull those colors together um, and, uh, and, and make them sit well with each other. These paints have been mixed, one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned uh, with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the proper consistency, which is. This is about a two and a half on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it's disappearing very quickly. 
and it's coming off of my stick very evenly. That is what we're working with. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brands, color, recipe, consistency, all of that. This box here is a picture of that particular painting. This box here contains a tip for this particular technique. And here at the bottom is the color palette used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each color palette card has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just some of the colors mix and match the technique cards with the color palette cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime and uh, the palettes can of course be used for anything beadwork scrapbook uh, what have you these are available at my website ginadeluca.net if you are international that's where you want to go but uh, if you're in the u.s they're also available at amazon.com and if you purchase off of amazon uh, please do leave feedback. They are sticklers for algorithms over there and feedback is a huge part of it. All right, this is an 18 by 24 gallery wrapped canvas. Hopefully I have mixed up enough paints for all of this. Fingers crossed. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is put a bit of paint in the cup that is going to have my straight pour slash cloud pour. And I will be layering in this color into that cup as well. So I'm definitely gonna make sure that I have some on reserve. I have covered my edges because the last thing I want is my canvas showing through on the edges because I did not uh, cover them. And these paints are mixed relatively thin. Um, when I am doing a straight pour with Floetrol, it is a pretty thin mixture. And I want to make sure that uh, my edges are covered if the sides get thin. And we lay down a base coat because we want to give our paints, our poured paints, something to slide around upon. It helps to control your composition. And for someone who uh, is involved in an art form that when it was invented, uh, it was called accidental art. I am a bit of a control freak and I want to control as much as I can. So putting down this base coat helps me control my composition because if you uh, if you pour onto a bald canvas, a naked canvas, your paints have to stick to something. And in particular, if you are doing a straight pour, some of the best stuff happens on the edge. And so you wanna make sure that you give yourself as many options as possible. Uh, something has to stick to the canvas and if it's not your base coat, it's gonna be your poured paints and the paints will just stick to the canvas and then roll over top of itself as you're stretching. And then, uh, and then you lose everything on your edges. Now, if you lay down a base coat and you find that you are still having issues with the paint rolling over top of itself as you tilt, you may be tilting too quickly, or your base coat may be thicker than your poured paints. You want your base coat to be the same consistency or slightly thinner, never thicker than your poured paints. 
All right, my base coat is down and I'm going to pop some of these bubbles. I don't want these popping up through my poured paints. I definitely don't want it popping up where my water is going to be. We're going to see if I regret not doing a split base coat. I considered doing that and I wanted to see what would happen. So this is kind of an experiment. Um, but hopefully it'll work. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Move this a bit so you can see the cup. I do think I'm going to add a bit more of this blue in first. And I'm going to do my set best to save a little bit just in case I need to straighten out a horizon. We'll see. We'll see if that works. Always remember to check your consistency before putting it into your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. All right. I'm going to start with this lightest color. Looks like white, but is a very pale blue. That is something that I also like to do um, when I'm coming up with my color palettes. I don't often just use plain white. Um, I will usually just lightly tint it. And uh, sometimes just adding a, a, just a bit of a tint to a color if it, 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 it will still appear white. In the painting it's going to appear white. But if I were to make it pure white, it would have a slightly less uh, realistic effect for the clouds, if that makes any sense. Because when you look at clouds, you know, you look at a cloud and you go, that's white. But if you really look at the cloud, it's usually not white. It is reflecting the many colors that are around it adding a bit of that and now for the pal pale yellow color and I'm pouring from up high I want these colors to blend And I actually really want these to blend this time. So I'm going to take a skewer and I'm just going to make an X through it. Kind of like you do with the flip cup. And then just a bit of this on top. to give those paints that are on top something to react with. Oh, well, there's not much left, but hopefully that would be enough to straighten out horizon. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try to make a cloud formations. And I'm going to avoid going back up through the middle. I'm just gonna kind of do these long ribbons. Which of course are going to be stretched and they create cells. Oh, I lied, I'm going back through the middle. Oh, 
All right. Now, as I stretch this out from side to side, Hopefully, <laughs> I'll get some very cloudy looking cells and um, it will stretch and have a more realistic cloud effect. As always, popping the bubbles, being patient. Might as well hit the base coat down here because they do keep popping up as it sits. I believe there is some schmutz in there. This should be fun trying to find it when it's nice and thick like this. It is very difficult uh, sometimes before you tilt to find the schmutz. You can see that there's something there, but it's actually kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where it is until it starts to thin out a bit. So we'll see what happens. Still see lots of bubbles. Let's pop those babies. So, a few times I've had the satin enamels um, crack on me while they're drying. And the only times that that has happened is when I have torched it after I stretched it. Um, after it was done and I gave it an extra torch. So, I try to avoid doing that. I try to get my torching done before it is fully stretched. Alright, let's give this baby a tilt. Let's stretch this out. Let's make some clouds.
bit more of a stretch side to side. You definitely don't want too much paint sitting on there. But the stretching will also give these clouds a bit of a more natural effect. And one more stretch to the other side. Well, I don't know that I'm going to get this down to a 30 minute video, but it won't be an hour and a half. I can tell you that. <laughs> And even doing this, just going side to side, is really helpful to be mindful of where the weight of your paint is. That will help you control your composition. Like I kind of want to straighten this corner out. So that's what I'm doing. Also, there's a lot of paint on here. Okay, now I'm going to bring the weight of that paint back to the center. So it's not pulling in one direction or another. All right, now for the water. So generally your water is the darkest at the back and it gets lighter as it comes toward you as you're viewing it in nature. So I start with the darkest color at the back and I want that greenish color more up front where it would kind of look like the it's getting more shallow. This looks like a hot mess. Hopefully there is a method to my madness. Let's hope. Again with this mid colored blue.
I have my little handy dandy palette knife here. I love this one. This is my favorite one. I'm not trying to really get down into that base coat. I'm trying to just swipe this over top of that base coat. If anything, I want to bury that base coat. And just blend these colors together. Got base coat. I got down to the base coat. So as you can see, this is a whole lot of paint. I will be tilting this side to side to try to tilt some of this off, making sure that my edges are properly covered here. Maybe just take some of these drippings and cover the side with it. It is painted the sky color and this is the water. So we need to adjust that a bit. Okay, one of the cool things about working with metallics is you can put ripples in there and they will stay. It will look textured even when it's not, which is why I love using the metallics for the water. It gives it a very natural look. trying to straighten this horizon out. But I'm not fussing with it too much. <laughs> Note to self. And then something to consider when you're doing water. The further back it is, the smaller the waves will be to your perception. And then when you're up close, they will be bigger. So I will use the smaller swipes that are closer together for the back. All right, I'm starting to get fussy. Oh, 
Okay. I'm gonna stop that. And now I'm just going to tilt this off the sides a bit. Stretch this out so there's not so much paint on my canvas. But the whole time paying attention to what's going on up top too because I don't want to mess that up. Hmm. The nice thing about using the cup hooks um, First of all, it helps me to level my canvas because I can get very precise. My work surface isn't level, so my I have to level every canvas. But you can use them as a pivot when you're tilting, like I'm doing right now. Um, it makes it super easy. It's a lot easier to do this than it is to hold this painting up and uh and try to do this So I'm paying attention to where the weight of my paint is. I want it to be in the center when I'm done. I don't want all of the weight of the paint to be sitting on this side or on that side. I want it to be more centered if I can. I mean, obviously, whatever the uh, <laughs> composition dictates, sometimes it has to be there. But I try to avoid it when I can. I have bubbles popping up. Bumming me out. I'm just touching up my ripples a bit here. And the more you do this, the more you'll start to see what motions look natural, what motions create natural looking ripples. And if you watch me a lot, then you know that uh, I do a lot of um, 
impressionist work with fluid acrylics, seascapes, uh, and the splashes. Splashes really gave me a lot of insight in, into how to make it look more natural. And every time you do this, every time you do a painting like this, you will get better. My first ones, you know, I, I feel like they improved every time uh, that I've done it, so. Okay, well, I think, I think I'm gonna be done with this. I'm gonna step away. It's at 41 minutes, so some of it, I think I can get, shave some of that off, but 45 minutes, if that's what it is, that's not so bad. All right, so I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit just to see what else happens up here, if anything, and, um, and I'm gonna bring you in for a close-up, back in a few. Okay, here it is. I've oh, got a little bit of glare there, I'm gonna to try to avoid that. But, uh, the clouds are looking cloudy as one would hope. Those yellow cells popping up are bumming me out a bit. Uh oh, camera's going crazy again. Let me back out a bit and see if that helps. Let's get in close on the water. You can see how doing the darker in the back and the lighter up front gives it a realistic effect. And adding that bit of green in there makes it feel like it's closer to the shore and it's starting to kick up sand. But that is what we have. I hope I did the uh, the collaboration proud. I know we're gonna be seeing some magnificent pieces today. I haven't seen any yet, but I know who's uh, doing the creating. So I know there's gonna be some magnificent work, but that is it for me for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Do check out the description box below for links to all of the other uh, artists if you are just catching this and did not know that, uh, that there was a full collab. All of the links to the other uh, artists will be in the description box. And you will also find the links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Always appreciate it, but definitely not expect it. The links to my affiliates. Uh, we have Arteza, which is in this painting. Deco Art, which as y'all know, that's it's kind of my bread and butter right there. All my cell makers. And uh, there's also the Amazon link. So check those out. Anything that you purchase off the entire websites, if you enter through that link, you will receive a I will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Uh, also, in the description box, you will find the link to my website, ginadeluca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards. And of course, the inspiration cards are available at Amazon. And last but not least, join our Facebook group. Post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. But that is it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.